Ladies and gentlemen, once upon a time, a coupe, or do you say coupe, was a sporty two-door car. But then the Germans got together and decided that what the world needed was a four-door coupe as Vanna, I mean Nathan, will demonstrate. So, that's right. instead of having just two doors, the modern coupe now has four doors and a row and a low roof line. Coming up next on the fast lane car, the brand new Volkswagen CC R line. Do not despair, for I know this engine well. It is the same two liter that is in so many great Volkswagen products. This particular one puts out 200 horsepower and 207 pound-feet of torque, and it is beautifully matched to a manual, yes, manual six-speed. Uh, I just, I, I can't contain myself. <laughs> you know, Nathan, I hear more coming from under the hood than I do from the tailpipe. This is a European sophisticated car. You don't need all that noise. And besides, you should get some aftermarket exhaust. I think it sounds a little bit better. Yeah, you know, turbos are always a little bit on the gentle side. Well, won't let me go over 4,000 RPM revving in here. So the R-Line gives you Nathan doing his best pirate impression, but the R-Line actually gets you a more aggressive front headlight. You get different R, R wheels and 18 inch tires, and perhaps best of all, you get R badging R everywhere. Pirate not included, nor Nathan. I can't help it, sorry folks. The interior is proper European, thank you. It feels so much more substantial than, say, oh, I don't know, a Passat's interior. It's quality. Everything you feel feels like it's just well-made and thick and not hard plastic and tinty. You know, we're making fun of the R-Line, <laughs> but it is surprisingly roomy back here. I kind of sort of fit. This is where Nathan sits when he drives, and if you look, my knees fit behind him and my head barely fits. Um, I think this would be a fine place to spend a lunch break, but you wouldn't want to go cross country. At least if you're over six foot, you wouldn't want to. So I'm gonna take a wild guess here, Nathan. It drives like a Passat. No, it doesn't. Really? That's what's good about it. Tell me about it. Well, you have a smaller vehicle. It actually reminds me of the old Jetta, the way it used to drive. It's very flat, and all of the body motions are really well dampened, well controlled. When you go around a corner, even though the suspension isn't really a sports suspension, it feels like one. Yet, you're able to drive on a road like this, nice and fast, moving along. And do you feel a lot? No. You know, it's, it's just a really, really good mix in this car. Yeah, I think it does have that sort of Autobahn tuned suspension, which uh, gives you great road feeling at the same time, provides a supple and fun drive. I think it's starting to show middle age. I'm not saying it's in its uh, retirement yet, but it's certainly starting to show its age a little bit. And it is front wheel drive, and I'd like to see a rear wheel drive car. Well, you're not going to get a rear-wheel drive Volkswagen out of anything. You good? Ready? Yep. Go ahead. Ready? Rolling? Can we start on the CC? 
Now, one of the things that you would normally give up in a coupe or coupe is utility, but this CC is surprisingly roomy, and that's probably because it's built on the old Passat platform. Wouldn't you agree, Nathan? I agree. And the other new Passat that's built here in America has a much bigger trunk, but there is just enough room for one big fat Nathan. Yeah, I know they specialize in, in front-wheel drive cars. I know that the GTI, which basically has the exact same engine, is one of the best in its class. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's comfortable, it's good, it's very German, and um, materials feel expensive, and the car looks expensive, and it's not. Ich liebe eine Volkswagen. <laughs> I bet you the Germans must be thinking we're out of our minds to criticize a 30,000 plus car as being expensive because I bet you in the Euro world. Oh my god, this thing must be like almost 2x. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Here we go, a little zero to 60 action, folks. Remember, as I love to remind everybody, over a mile above sea level, nearly 6,000 feet actually, so it won't be as fast as it is at sea level. Deal with it. All right, first one, I'm just gonna turn the AC off. There's no real sports setting, so here we go. I'm just gonna boost it a little bit. Say around 3,000 RPM and change. It spools up, it's awesome. That's not too bad at all. Well, you are driving it like a banshee out of you know where, Nathan. Oh, so, did you go under 10? Yes. Really? Under nine? Yes. Under eight? Yes. Under seven? No. Okay, what was your time? 7.87, best time, and that was with the traction control off and a little tiny bit of burning rubber. You know, that's very quick for what is essentially a pretty big car. Yeah, and a four-cylinder engine. It's just, it proves that turbochargers up here really do work. And, you know, this car doesn't compete with a lot. Maybe the Honda Accord Sport sort of, kind of. Yeah, There's a four series, of course, that's coming that's going to have four doors, but that's too expensive. Wait. There's a Mercedes that's more expensive. So, yeah, you're kind of in a class of your own when you get one of these. You know, I'd rather have one of these than I could Camry or an Accord. On the TFL scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, I'm going to have to give the R? R? <laughs> our line CC a lease it, just because it's pretty expensive at just a touch over $33,000 and you can get the same car with a lot more room in a regular Passat. And I will give it a buy it because this car has, it's the most European thing I can think of that you can get with a manual transmission for this money. I would spend my own money and buy one of these if I were allowed to. Let me translate that. It makes old men feel young. Ooh, I would flip you off, but we can't right now. <laughs> As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Saying thanks for watching, and see you next time on the Fast Lane Car. Arr. Hey, Nathan, the good thing about this car is you don't see a lot of on the road. No, you don't. In fact, here in Colorado, I think I've seen two. <laughs> yeah, and the other great thing is, you know, I'm making fun of the fact that it's a four-door coupe, Ooh. right? Yeah. But uh, the fact is, it is sexy, sleek, and sporty, and you can put the family in the back while uh, the child seat. So it does have a lot going for it. It certainly does, and I, I'm falling in love with the car. It's just there's something basic about it that really appeals to me, and at the same time, it's sophisticated, which I'm not. <laughs> it's that opposite to track, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Are you still shooting? Yeah. Why are you shooting? Because Roman told me to. Oh, this is a setup for something. I guess I'll put this away later. Why do we... Oh, I think I know what he wants to do. He wants to show off his new G-string to everybody on YouTube. So, guys, when you see Roman, think of him as being dressed in a teddy underneath. That's why his hair stays kind of upright. I want to look at it. Yo, let's go, guys. Come 
on. Why are you having them roll? Come on, let's go. Put this stuff away. We gotta get up to the mountains. Remember, we're doing the ultimate Ike towing test, dude. The Ike uh, gauntlet. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Uh, Check this out, guys. On the fast lane truck, we're gonna take this F-150, the brand new Silverado, and the current Tundra, and take them up from Silverthorne to the Eisenhower Tunnel and see which one is the best. I completely forgot we were doing this and we're doing it on the Fastlane truck. That's right, so go over to tfltruck.com or check out the Fastlane truck for the ultimate Ike Gauntlet.